What's going on guys? In this video, we are going to be creating a pattern in Python. Now to be more specific, we're going to be creating a triangle in Python. This triangle is going to be a right angled triangle, so a right triangle with the right angle on the left side. So a left, right angle, right triangle. This video along with other videos in the Python pattern creation are going to be aimed at beginners. All right, so let's take a look at the output so we get a better understanding of what exactly we are trying to create. Okay, so I ran the Python script and you'll see our right triangle and the amount of rows is specified by the integer that I fed into the Python script. So if you take a look at the command line, you'll see Python followed by the name of the script, followed by a number. Now if I try to change the number, say to seven, we'll instead get seven rows. So each row is represented by an asterisk and these asterisks create a right triangle. Now I want you guys to attempt to create this right triangle on your own. So pause the video and take as long as you need. Once you've come up with a solution or you want to see me explain the solution, I want you guys to unpause the video and I'll explain line by line how to come up with the solution. Welcome back guys. Hopefully you were able to come up with a solution. If not, don't worry. I will walk you line by line so you guys can fully understand how to come up with a solution. So before we take a look at the code, I want us to try to logically try to break down how to approach this problem. So the first thing we want to notice is the number of rows. So there are n or of x variable amount of rows depending on the number we feed in. So if we feed in five, we'll get back a pyramid with five rows. Or if we feed in seven, we'll get back a pyramid with seven rows. So that's the first thing we should try to tackle. How do we get back x amount of rows? And these rows are increasing incrementally. So you go from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven, etc. Now the best way to have something increase incrementally is a for loop. So with the for loop and using range, we can pretty much count the number of iterations or the number of times we loop uh, through the for loop. So let's just play around a little bit with the for loop and see if we can somehow come up with the solution from the for loop. All right, so I'm going to bring over the Python shell. Oops. Okay, so let's try to run for loop using range. And for range, we can put in anything. So we'll put in, let's just say five. Now, what do you want to do for each iteration? So for i in range five, basically we're going to have five different iterations. One thing we can do is print out i. So what i is going to represent is the iteration number. So for i in range five, uh, we're going to iterate through range five. So we're going to get back zero, one, two, three, four. So let's just print that out. Okay, so as you can see, our range is also increasing incrementally one by one. So it's very similar to the triangle pattern, but we do have to make a few tweaks. So the triangle pattern, it starts off with one, row one, row two, row three, and it goes all the way up to row seven. Now we can easily do that with range by ranging from one instead of zero. So what we'll do is we'll shift everything from zero, we'll shift it to one, and four, we'll shift it to five. Okay, so here, what we're doing is we're printing from one to six, but in actuality, we're only printing till five because six is not going to be printed out. So if you run this, okay. So with range from one to six, we can actually print out the row numbers of the triangle. So say we have a triangle with five rows, let's just call that N. we can print out the row numbers by ranging from one to n plus one. Okay. 
Now, if we have n equals 7, let's just copy this. And you'll see we print out uh, the seven different rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So by using a for loop, we can actually print out the row numbers. However, we don't want to print out the row numbers. We want to print out the asterisks. Okay. So let's just try printing out the asterisks. Now to print out the asterisk, all we need to do is put the asterisk within the quotation marks. Oops. Okay, so here we're able to print out an asterisk for each row. However, the problem we're facing right now is that each row looks the same. We can't distinguish the second row from the first row or the third row from the second row. While in the outputted pattern, we're able to tell which row is which due to the number of asterisks in that row. So the fourth row will have four different asterisks. The seventh row will have seven different asterisks. So that's the second part of this puzzle. How can we represent the number of asterisks if we have the row number? So if you think about it a little bit, the first row has one asterisk, the second row has two asterisks, the third row has three asterisks. So the row number is actually representing the number of asterisks. So instead of just printing out the asterisk, if we can multiply the asterisk by the row number, we will get back the row number amount of asterisks. So if we have row number three, we multiply three by the asterisk, we will get back three different asterisks. So let's just test that out. So here we're going to print out i, which is representing the row number, multiplied by the asterisk. Okay, now this might be a little confusing because we have an asterisk representing the multiplication symbol, but then we are also printing out asterisks. So the asterisk within the quotation mark is actually just a string as opposed to the asterisk, which is outside of the question mark. It acts like an operator. So it's actually i multiplying the string. And by multiplying a string, we will get multiple copies of that string. So let's just run this to see what I mean. Okay, so you'll see that the i, the first iteration is 1, then the next iteration is 2, and we're multiplying it by the string to produce multiple copies of that string, which are all just concatenated. So here we go. So this is basically the solution to our problem of how to print out a left right angle right triangle. All right, so this was the first video on printing out triangle patterns. So we're going to iteratively rank up the difficulty. So the next video is going to be another triangle pattern, but it's going to be a little more difficult. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.